So, my name is Lisa Hill and I am based at the University of Birmingham. I'd like to thank the Macula Society for inviting me to talk to you today. Um, I'm hopefully just going to take you on a journey of how we are trying to develop an immunotherapy eye job for A and B. So just before I start getting into the nitty gritty science and the exciting stuff, um, obviously uh, this type of project uh, cannot be done by a single person. We have a great team um, working on this. So there's myself at Birmingham, um, along with a very talented uh, postdoc called Chloe. And then we have uh, Professor Andrew Dick, who's based at the University of Bristol. And then also the uh, wonderful Professor Alistair Denniston, who most of you have just heard speak uh, moments ago. So we're the main group who are working on this project. So just to give you a little bit of background and context to the research that we're doing is um, for a number of years now, uh, our colleagues uh, in Bristol, uh, led by Professor Andrew Dick, have been looking at drugs that can target the immune system in order to try and treat the earlier uh, pathology that happens in A and B. In parallel, um, I've been leading a group of researchers at the University of Birmingham who have tried to find ways to deliver therapeutic agents into the eye. So, for example, we're very interested in developing technology which can carry drugs onto the eye surface and inside of the eye. And uh, especially, we are trying to develop ways in order to carry therapeutic to the back of the eye, so to the retina, which is obviously very important for treating uh, age-related macular degeneration. So we started to uh, join forces and um, obviously with the research that Bristol have been doing on the immunotherapies and then using our drug delivery technologies, um, we decided uh, we would try and develop a, an immunotherapy eye job for the treatment of A and B. And we were fortunate to get some uh, funding for a project grant from Fight for Sight and then this enabled us to employ Chloe as, as a postdoc on the project. So um, this will be uh, familiar for a lot of you, I suspect, um, but just to kind of orientate you to where we're looking at, um, obviously the uh, A and B affects the light sensing membrane at the back of the eye. So this is the retina, and it's in this area here where we have the macula. And it's actually a uh, degeneration in this area which causes the disease. This uh, image here is just a breakdown of the different cells that we find uh, in the macula and in the retina. And in particular, it's these uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells which cause a lot of the problems associated with age related macular degeneration. But what we're interested in is how we can try and protect these cells from de degenerating. And then furthermore, can we um, then develop these treatments as an eye drop so that patients won't then need to have the intravitreal injections, which a lot of you may be familiar with. So just to try and um, give you a little bit of background about the immunotherapies and the reason why we're interested in that is so we're trying to understand how alterations in the immune system in the eye can lead to A and B. And what we know is that um, within the structures at the back of the eye, that there are immune cells which work constantly to try and clear a lot of metabolic or cellular waste, which happens within the retina. It's a very active tissue. And this um, can be akin to um, our wonderful uh, garbage service in Birmingham. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that if you imagine the garbage truck, uh, the garbage truck is a retina, and then you have the immune cells, 
which I'm saying here are the, um, uh, the garbage collectors. And what they're doing is they're clearing up the trash and getting rid of it here. So it keeps the system going. The immune cells come into the back of the eye and they can, they can make sure the tissue is okay and that there's no waste being left in the area. But what happens in AMD is that there's a breakdown of these systems. So we don't have these, um, these guys, these immune cells working efficiently. And then in AMD, what we end up with is an accumulation of all this kind of waste material in the retina. And this can present itself and lead to the presence of drusen under these uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells. So this starts to build up and then it can uh, damage how the cells are linked to each other. This can also cause a little bit more inflammation at the back of the eye, which then starts all these cellular cascades and eventually leads to the um, progression and the infiltration or the growth of blood vessels into the retina. And it's this blood vessel growth which is abnormal and which is um, the only um, pathology in A and D that we can treat. So this is where the anti-VEGF therapies work. They work to try and prevent the new blood vessel um, growth through into the retina. So what we're interested in is to try and prevent this from happening by restoring all the processes which occur earlier on. And we think that targeting the immune system to try and stimulate the, stimulate the immune cells will ultimately help uh, us to keep the retina healthy and hopefully pre uh, prevent some of the symptoms that we see with A and D. So that particular chemical that we are interested in is called interleukin-33. And from lots of uh, studies in the laboratory, um, looking at cells, looking at how it works, and looking how it interacts within the retina, we have got a fairly good idea that by administering, giving an interleukin-33, you can actually help fine-tune the immune system. And we can basically stimulate it in order for it to um, you know, work properly. Uh, and this is akin here to you know, getting, getting, getting the guys here to uh, start working again, go and clear up the, the rubbish on the streets. And we tested this, or um, sorry, the colleagues, our colleagues at Bristol um, tested this in a mouse model of A and B. So here we can see, um, this is a picture, that the microscope uh, image of a, uh, of a retina or the back of the eye. And what we can see is how the blood vessels are growing through. So all this red here shows blood vessel growth. So what we're interested in is if we can try and reduce the amount of blood vessel growth that happens here. And we can see that when we, um, when we don't treat the eye, that we get this large volume of blood vessel growth. But when we do treat the eye with our molecules, so if we inject uh, interleukin-33 into the back of the eye, we get a significant reduction in the blood vessel growth. And that's really exciting for us because it shows that we've got this molecule that actually has a biological effect in the model system of A and D. This work was published um, by our colleagues in Bristol. Um, and at this point, this is where we started to, to chat to the guys in Bristol and thought, well, this is great. We've got this really exciting molecule that's uh, likely to work very well. Um, we tested it in the mouse model. So let's see if we can perhaps make this as a drug that we could deliver as an eye drop rather than having to inject it in people. So how do we go about doing that? Um, so developing eye drops for A and B um, does, present, does present its own challenges. So if you think here, this is just a, a, a picture of the eye, a cross section of the eye. 
So the eye is made up of lots of different cellular layers. So it has a very um, specialised transparent layer at the front called the cornea. The cornea is made up of lots of different cell types. Following the cornea, you have a space here at the front of the eye, and it's a fluid filled space. So we have what's known as aqueous humor here. So if you think a drug would need to get through the cornea, you need to get through this, this um, river of fluid. And then at the back of the eye, you have this jelly-like substance called the vitreous. So this is quite a, um, a thick substance. So again, it poses another barrier for drugs to be able to get through to that. And ultimately, what we want to do is to try and get our drugs to reach the back of the eye in order to have their actions on the cells within the retina. So it is quite a challenge to formulate a drug in order to try and get it to the place that you need to. And you also need to make sure you can see enough of the drug in order for it to have its effect. So one of the reasons why the therapy is going to be at the moment is so successful is because the injection is put right into the eye, right at the site where it's needed to have its actions. So it kind of bypasses all this need for the drug to travel through the eye. Um, and this slide here just shows um, the, the different layers that I've just mentioned. So the cornea, uh, as, I, as I just mentioned, is particularly a uh, strong barrier for drug delivery. So we have different types of cells here. We have a, an epithelial layer. So we have five or six layers of cells there. And then we have what's called, um, uh, we have like a membrane. And then we have this big kind of middle area called the stroma, which is full of collagens and cells. And then we have another membrane. So um, I don't, I don't mean to overcomplicate this or anything, but it's just to, to show you really that there's lots of different cellular layers and we have to look at how the chemistry of our drug is and also what we can use sometimes to try and aid the drug to get past these barriers in the eye. So we developed um, a few years ago something called a cell penetrating peptide. So this is a, um, a protein essentially, which has the ability to kind of, it acts a bit like a Trojan horse. So you put your cell penetrating peptide and um, hopefully you can bind it to your drug of interest. So for this project, it will be with interleukin 33. And then what we're hoping is that the CPP can run it back to the Trojan horse to take the drug through the eye in order to reach the, the retina. So it doesn't just punch holes and leave big holes so your eye falls apart. We wouldn't, we wouldn't develop something like that. But what, what it does is cell penetrating peptide. It, it can allow drugs to travel between cells or through cells, but it only temporarily kind of moves the cells out of the way in order for the drug to go through. So um, before the interleukin 33 project, we actually wanted to test the ability of our cell pen penetrating peptide to work. Um, so the obvious thing for us to do is to actually um, look at our CPP eye drop and compare the results of that to the results of anti-VEGF in mice. Um, so again, using uh, a mouse model of age-related macular degeneration, you can see here um, in the back of the eye, this is all this blood vessel growth that we see. So basically what we're looking at here is quite a large circle of, um, of disease pathology, if you like. So what we're aiming to do is to try and reduce that to a smaller size um, in order to treat the disease. So this is how we model it in the lab. So using the gold standard treatment, so this is using a um, injection into the back of the eye. What we've got here, and you, sorry, injecting uh, the anti-VEGF into the back of the eye. We can see that the anti-VEGF work really, really well. So they really reduce the size 
of that A and B um, blood vessel growth here. But what was super exciting about this research is that when we compared the injected anti to our eye drop VEGF, so this was a cell penetrating peptide bound to the anti molecule, and then we put that on the top on the front of the eye, and then we measured the, um, the blood vessel growth at the back of the eye. And actually, our eye drop demonstrated that it worked just as well as when we injected the anti into the eye. So that was really exciting for us because it, it showed that in the mouse eye, we were able to reduce that A and D um, pathology as well as injecting it. So we actually published this work um, and we got some um, nice press about it. But then what I was really keen to do is, right, okay, so we know from our studies in Bristol, we've got this really good molecule that was able to alter the earlier um, disease in A and B, and we've got this technology which enables us to deliver drugs as, a, as an eye drop to the back of the eye. So this project is all about merging these two aspects and trying to develop an immunotherapy eye drop. So um, this is where all the, the fun stuff in the laboratory starts. So the main questions that we are trying to address is, first of all, do we know if our cell penetrating peptide can actually bind to IL-33 to form a complex? If we can't get them to bind, then it's we're not we're unlikely going to be able to, to send the drug to the back of the eye so we need to know that we can get those two to stick together first of all then very importantly we have to check that once we've joined our uh, eye drug technology with the drug with the IL-33 do they cause any uh, toxicity to ocular cells so we can grow up um, cells in the back of the eye in the lab, and then we can put different doses of our uh, eye drop on there, and we can count the number of cells at different time points. So this tells us if the cells are happy and healthy when they've got the drug applied to them, because obviously we want to make sure that the drug is safe. So this is the first steps in order to do that. The third important question is. Can our, um, does our eye drop prevent any movement of the retinal cells? So part of the um, pathology in A and D in the back of the eye is to get an increase in uh, a cell called fibroblast at the back of the eyes. So these, these cells literally um, move around and the speed at which they move is important. So what we try to do is stop the migration of these cells in the back of the eye because that can um, make A and D worse. And then finally, and I guess the really exciting bit uh, towards the end of this project will be does our eye drop actually reach the retina and have an effect? So can we put it on the surface of a, a man's eye and does it have an effect to reduce A and D. So the first question, can our CPP or our, uh, our eye drop technology bind to IL-33? Yes, we know it can. So that was really good, a um, good first step to show that actually we can form this new eye drop, which is an IL-33 based eye drop. If our cell penetrates in peptide in the IL-33, it's toxic to eye cells. So this is uh, where we grow them up in the lab. So you can see here that we put eye cells in a dish and we put some nutrients in that. So we keep, we essentially keep the cells alive in the dish. So this red um, fluid here is literally just a lot of nutrients to keep the cells happy, some vitamins and minerals. And then when we look into the microscope, this is what we see. So these are uh, thousands and thousands of little cells 
all quite happy. And then what we can do is put our jug onto them and we can um, use machines to count the number of cells for us. And then we can see with or without our drug if the number of cells is decreased and that would give us an indication as to whether um, this, the, the drug is safe or not. And excitingly, we were able to show that um, our new eye drop was not toxic to a number of different cell types. This is just one example. So we can see that all the cells survive um, with various doses of our drug. Um, so that was really good. It means that we can move on to the next step. So this is a, a lovely video of the cells. So um, we wanted to track, so we wanted to measure under a microscope using the video if our eye drop could prevent the movement of retinal cells. So actually what you can see here, I hope, it, I hope it's clear on, on all your screens because I love looking at this. I just think it's, I just think it's really cool. Um, but what you've got here is actually uh, retinal cells at both sides. We scratch down the middle of the, um, the culture dish and then over the space of two days and they move towards each other. So what we can do is place our drug on some cells and not on others, and then we compare the speed at which the cells move towards each other. And actually, what we found is that our drug um, and our eye drop and the drug actually helped with this. So it helped the um, it helped prevent the movement of retinal cells, which is really positive. To trying to treat some of the disease that's going on at the back of the end. And then the one question we're all trying to um, answer, but we don't, I don't have the answer for you um, today, is can our eye drop um, obviously get through to the back of the eye and can it treat A and B? Um, so we have uh, unfortunately had the lab shut for the last four months, but the last one now back open, which is great. So it means that you know myself and Chloe and the guys at Bristol, um, you know, we can move on with this next phase of the, of the project now and try and answer these questions. So hopefully, um, you know, I'll keep you you updated um, and we'll keep you posted on the progress for this. So thanks very much. Um, that's that concludes my talk. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and. Um, I'd just like to say a special thanks to the Matthew Society. Uh, Chloe and myself have gone um, around some of the, the local groups in Birmingham and Malden and we've had a fantastic time and um, we're really, really privileged and grateful um, that we can involve you in our research and uh, we look forward to obviously continuing with this and uh, speaking to you all soon. So I'll end my presentation there. And um, yeah, look forward to taking any questions. Thank you.